I mean, you can fish for a, any type of catfish year round, no matter what. It's just how to find them and where to find them and being patient about it. Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing and the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your fearless host, Angie Scott. Welcome to this week's episode of the Woman Angler and Adventurer. I'm your host, Angie Scott. Not so sure about the fearless part, but always striving for that, right? So this week we're talking Catfishing 101 with Whisker Seeker Tackle's Amy Hansen. Catfish are hard fighters, and they can be a, a fun summer fish too, especially if you want to go out at night when the summer sun isn't beating down on you so hard. In this episode, Amy shares some great advice for someone who's just wanting to get into it. We talk flatheads, channels, blues, and so much more, so I hope you enjoy. fishing because okay. uh, we haven't really covered that a whole lot on the show. Um, we had Paula Kathy Smith showed up to our Nashville boat show episode. And uh, of course mm-hmm. she's, she's diehard into catfishing and she mm-hmm. was, she was at the catfishing show um, that I ran into you and Troy at with whisker seeker tackle. And yes, I, you know, that was my first time going to that event and it was in Louisville at the, uh, the fairgrounds. First of all, it took me forever to figure out how to get in there. (laughs) To find it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But, but. (laughs) Every year we have to think about how do we get back. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I was, I was kind of surprised at how many people were there and you, you guys were staying super busy and uh it's almost like catfishing is this whole like subculture in the industry that i didn't know existed it is and it's one of those where it, it kind of has a good and bad re- reputation as well you know we're not like bass fishing or walleye we're not um necessarily a clean fishing sport and we're you know you can get dirty and messy and it you have to catch your bait and do all that stuff. You can't just use like just a plastic or one rod. And so a lot of people like think of, oh, stink bait or fish fries and like, but it, but it can be very glamorous too, is the way I always describe it. Um, you can travel all over the country to catch a catfish, whether it be, you know, a channel cat or blues are more Southern, but a flathead too. But um, you can catch monsters, anything from, you know, one pound to over a hundred pounds and, have a memory of a lifetime and it's just it can be so rewarding just as well as any other type of species I love fishing for everything so I'm not Mm. I'm a diehard cat fisherman but I truly love fishing for everything but yes um either you you hate it or you love it is kind of one of the things and I know like a lot of bass fishermen don't really like cat fishing Mm -hmm. or cat fishermen so I mean it kind of we're kind of in that gray area so we're hoping to make our reputation better and um, we really really practice CPR and stuff so uh, we always try to be very good conservationists about it and respective to everybody else on the water and so it seems to me that like the people that love catfishing really love catfishing for the most part yeah (laughs) what what, is it is it the the size that you think most draws people the fact that you can get these monster fish it's it's definitely the fight. I love targeting bigger channels. Um, I've I just recently caught my personal best blue in Kansas a month ago. Um, it was fifty eight pounds, and that was awesome. And my husband's caught like a couple eighties and everything. And you know those are amazing, truly amazing fish. And we would love to continue to keep catching those, but honestly, our favorite are just monster size channels like in the 20s to 30 and it's just the fight that they put on they fight better than you know a 60 pound blue and they just they're beautiful looking fish so have you done much flathead catfish fishing we try to do it like once a year if we can um we're usually depends on um, our schedule if we have a lot of tournaments lined up throughout the year we might not have too much time or just work schedules and things like that but we do try to do it um, once a year, and it's 
so far it's just been kind of local. We just go to a local river or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, I would definitely like to start planning some trips to travel. Um, we did try to travel out to, uh, West Virginia a couple years ago and actually went with some friends who are guides and weren't able to get on too many flatheads. Of course, it was like the one day that in the fall ended up being like 90 degrees out. And so it just wasn't a good day for flatheads, but I was able to catch a 48 pound blue while we were nice. there. So that was <laughs> very nice. But yeah, it's something that we, it's still a goal that we keep trying to pursue. We just finding the right time and getting out the door and going to do it because mm-hmm. we're always just doing something else or at a tournament or somewhere else. So, yeah. but yes, it is. We do love to try to target them. So we're just still trying to finesse our technique with them. <laughs> yeah. So I got my first experience fishing. Actually, it was really my first ever experience going out specifically the target catfish, but it was mm-hmm. specifically flathead catfish fishing and it was on the Mississippi river downtown La Crosse, Wisconsin. So that was interesting yes, in and yes. of itself, being on the river, like in a downtown setting. But um, yeah. we went out with a guide. And it was at night, wasn't it? Yeah, and it was at night. Yep. Yes. And yep. Uh, the guide that took us out is like just diehard flathead catfish. That's his passion. Um, mm-hmm. he loves how, uh, you know, they're a predator, just everything about them. And so it was hard not to kind of get fired up about them because he was just so passionate. I think he's like a biologist. So he really studies these. Oh, nice. Yeah. And it was just yeah. cool. He had a lot of really great information and I was like, man, if, if I get into catfishing, like I want to target flatheads because, um, yeah. They're just excited, you know, they're, they're different than, than channel cats or blue cats. And we were using live bluegill. So, yeah. so there was that element. We, he had to catch the mm-hmm. bluegill first and then he showed us yep. like how to hook them and stuff. And then you just throw it out mm-hmm. and let those bluegills swim around and, and hope you get one. And so it was kind of like sitting and waiting, you know, for a while. But some nights, obviously there's more activity than others and it's just, you know, but he, mm-hmm. he just absolutely loves it. And I don't know when he ever sleeps because it seems like he's out every night. <laughs> and that, that again is what's hard. And you can, a lot of people say you can't catch them during the day. You can. I, my personal best, um, has came out during the day in the middle of a tournament, but a lot of times people do like to go late at night because it is a good summer fishing, mm-hmm. uh, a summer fish. And, you know, it's so hot during the day and stuff, but in, at night, you know, they start to come up into the shallows and come out of their, you know, little holes that they're basically hanging out in all day long. Yeah, they are super aggressive. So you might have to wait for hours, but when you get one to go down, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. And yeah, I just, I'm jealous. I really wish we could take the more time to do it because I would like to learn more about flatheads and I've, and target them more. I've caught two out here on Percy Priest, just outside of Nashville, not fishing for catfish. Just, I think the first time I caught one was, uh, I was crappie fishing and I just mm. happened to get a, a flathead. It was not very big, but I, I had never mm-hmm. seen one in person before. So I was like, at first I was like, I knew it was a catfish, but I was like, what's wrong with this catfish? <laughs> it looked like it was diseased. <laughs> and you're probably only using like four pound test or something. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, uh, yeah. So yeah. it was a pretty fun fight, even though it wasn't a very big one. Yeah. But at first I yeah. was like, what's wrong with this catfish? So then I like Googled, I don't know how I, put in like i don't know spotted something catfish because it you know it definitely looked different than the catfish i'd seen before and yep. i was like oh it's a flathead okay that yeah. makes sense and they're so pretty looking yeah they are very so okay so i wanted to talk to you about if somebody is interested in getting into catfishing is there like a kind of a entry level setup they could use i've always used like carolina rigs just some tips that you could give somebody who's just interested in uh starting out i mean just about anything would work but these are just kind of my go-to's about a medium heavy rod um i use seven and a half foot but if you know if you're gonna go to a bank and you need to kind of get out there you know over some rocks or snags or something you can use you know your nine ten foot rods but yeah we do slip sinker or carolina rig type of rig and 
For starting out, it just depends on the size of fish you're going for. Um, we kind of go a little intense as far as our line. We use anywhere from 65 to 80 pound braid, but you can definitely start out way lower and just do, um, you know, 30 pounds. We prefer braid, but if you prefer mono, that's totally cool. There's nothing wrong with it. It's all a preference thing, but we do braid for our main line. And then basically we'll just do a no roll sinker and you can pretty much do, you know, one to two ounces, depending on if you're um, not in like heavy current or anything like that. And then just uh, put that on your main line, and then you got your barrel swivel. And then for our leader line, we use mono, but again, you can use your preference. And we'll use anywhere from 30 to 50, but if you're just kind of getting started and you want to do, you know, 10, 20, or 30 pound, that's fine too. And then we just tie it off with a hook at the end. And the hook size... Again, would depend on your size of fish. If you're just going for some smaller channels, you can get by with your four to six at. Um, if you're going for, you know, some maybe some flatheads or bigger size channels or blues, you can go anywhere from six to eight to ten. Do you use circle hooks or? I use, uh, I'm sponsored by Whisker Seeker and absolutely truly love everything that they have. And I'm not trying to push this, <laughs> but we use the, we have a thing called triple threat hooks. And what it is, is it's a hybrid circle hook. And so if you if you don't have that, then yes, I would suggest a circle hook. Um, but this one's a hybrid circle hook. So you can basically put it in your rod holder and it can hook up on its own. Or you can pick the rod up and you can give, you know, your long sweeping hook set. Or you can just reel down and hook it that way too. So it works. It's kind of one of those where you set it and forget it. You don't have to be like oh, shoot, I need to pick it up and set the hook or anything like that. It's just that mm -hmm. uh, you just throw it out there and forget about it. But um, if you are one that just loves to hold the rod, whether you're in a boat or sitting on a bank, you just love to hold the rod, um, you know, then your typical J hook is great. Otherwise, I would suggest a circle hook. Um, their hookup ratio is very good. So mm -hmm. it, that's uh, what I prefer. But And then from there, you can start to get fancy and you can add floats and, you know, um, we have versa rattles that we use for extra vibration and noise and things. And so, but just the, like you said, the slip sinker rig is, is the go-to and you can use that just about anywhere for anchoring. You know, even if you are on a boat and you're trolling or drifting, just it works for anything mm -hmm. just about. And then bait wise, like, you know, you mentioned stink baits. Uh, what, what type of bait would you recommend for somebody who's just starting out? So the good thing about channels is um, they're not too picky. <laughs> you could put a hot dog on, you'd probably catch something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so, and that's kind of where that reputation comes from, too. It can be stink bait or any or chicken liver, you know, all that stuff. But we prefer, we always catch our own bait. So um, where I'm from, we have shad, mm -hmm. and that is the bait of choice for channel cats up here. Um, bluegill also work great. Crappie, it just depends on your state, you know, um, what's legal and not legal to use. Skipjack is big down south for, you know, blues and, um, channels and everything. So, or if you're, like you said, going for flatheads and, you know, bluegills work great. But we prefer live or at least fresh cut bait is what we use. Okay. But if you just have a can of worms, then, you know, that's awesome. So, do you, you're just getting started. You throw a cast net then to catch the shad? Yes, we okay. do. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. Or rod and reel for um, our bluegills and stuff. Right. Cool. Yep. Awesome. So you're you're like fishing for your bait and then you're fishing for the fish you actually want to go after. Yes. <laughs> yes. Catfishing is not a just go out for a couple hours. It's a go out for three days. You got to go catch your bait and then you got to go do this. And yep. Yeah. And do you have like a round bait tank on your boat? that you keep the shad in or? Um, it just depends. Uh, our shad, we usually just, we just keep it on ice and just keep it as fresh as possible. So, um, oh, okay. shad is very, very, very hard to keep alive. Mm -hmm. Um, you can run a bait tank if you want to for it, but we just pretty much do fresh. Even if we say we have a tournament on a Saturday and we catch fresh bait Friday night, we'll still try to catch bait again Saturday morning because we want it as fresh as possible. We Or we will freeze it fresh like instantly so if we need it for uh, throughout the winter or 
come spring if we weren't able to get any right away when ice out happens. But um, for bluegills and stuff, yes, we'll run a live well for them and Mm -hmm. keep them alive as long as possible. So for shad, they don't necessarily have to be alive when you're using them to fish for catfish. Like, uh, no. Okay. Because I've done some we, striper fishing, and, and mm-hmm. in that case, you know, it's very important to try to keep them alive. And then that's a whole process because, like you said, they're so sensitive. So you really need to have mm-hmm. that round bait tank so they're not like running their noses into the corners and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And um, mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty complicated. Um, but it's good to hear that catfishing doesn't have to be quite that. Uh, involved i no. guess <laughs> and there there are times where though it can be um you know you you cut up all your pieces and you got your head or a fillet or a chunk or you know this or that and um i do suggest if you have multiple rods to always have different types of bait out there as best as possible even if it's all shad but you have a head on one or you know a chunk on the other they're kind of finicky at times and might only be taking fillets or might only be mm-hmm. taking small pieces versus big pieces or sometimes you need to throw the whole shad on and just cut the tail off and call it good so it's you kind of play around but always using um different baits like if you are out on a boat and you have that chance to have uh multiple rods use different uh choices of bait different rigs if you can just different styles and just to see what's working best gotcha From billion-dollar ad budgets and arena naming rights to tens of thousands of retail locations, big wireless providers spend big to appear like they're your only option. How do they afford it all? (laughs) That big bill you get at the end of every month. Mint Mobile had a different idea. Instead of brick-and-mortar overhead, Mint Mobile is online only. What does that mean for you? A whole lot of savings because wireless plans from Mint Mobile start at just $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for just $15 a month. You'll save enough that you can get a brand new rod and reel for the upcoming season. For anyone who just hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan, and you can even keep your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. By going online only and eliminating traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash waypoint. That's mintmobile.com slash waypoint. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash waypoint. And where do they typically hang out? I mean, I guess it it probably varies depending on all sorts of different factors, but um, I know around here they say they hang out like in the rip rap quite a bit by the bridge and stuff like that. Is there anywhere if somebody didn't know where to go that they could kind of find an area and, and try that out? So, it, yes, it does uh, vary. Right now um, in the springtime, for channels especially, they are kind of up in the shallow waters, which is my favorite time to fish. They're mm-hmm. in, the other day we were just out and we were catching them in two feet of water. Wow. Um, and then, you know, as the water temps warm up more and more, then, you know, you'll find them, you know, along your current and things like that. And so um, as the water temps warm up for us, we'll start to go from anchoring to trolling. Mm-hmm. And so we'll look for drop-offs and humps and um, channel it, just things like that, and mm-hmm. we'll just drift or troll, whichever you prefer, uh, your rigs over it. So it's a moving bait, and because they're starting to get a little more aggressive too. Um, and then, you know, temps start to slow down a little bit or low down a little bit, and then they'll just kind of the met- it's, it's all about metabolism too. So when the temps start to go down, their metabolism starts to go down just a little bit as well, mm-hmm. and they become less aggressive. But you also have fall time where they might kind of spike back up a little bit because they're getting ready to feed before winter. Mm. And so, but you can also still catch them in the winter as well. So flatheads do have their wintering holes, and so do blues. Um, channels just kind of like 
just chill out, but they'll all still eat. They just won't be as, as, as aggressive. So, um, you, I mean, you can fish for like any type of catfish year round, no matter what, it's just how to find them and where to find them and being patient mm-hmm. about it. But flatheads, I'm still trying to learn. Um, definitely a lot of like brush piles and bridge pillars and things mm-hmm. like that. Any type of barges, you know, mm-hmm. if there's a sunken barge or anything like that. Uh, blues, I'm still trying to learn. We They aren't in Iowa, so we have to travel down south and we don't always get that chance to go down there as often as we would like to fish for them. But um they're just slightly different than channels, but they're, I, I want to say you can still kind of do the same thing. You can still shallow water fish for them, but then they'll start to move out into the current and everything like that. So, mm-hmm. cool. or channel, I should say. Yeah, cool. Well, okay, so you mentioned Whisker Seeker Tackle. So that's a Iowa-based company. You talk, can you talk yeah. a little bit more about why, uh, I guess, why you're sponsored by them, like why you love them so much? Yeah. Um, so the owner is Matt Davis and he's over by Des Moines, Iowa. And he basically, I can't remember how many years it's been. It's probably been about eight or nine years now. I think that the company's been around and he was just group catfishing and he started making some rigs. He's one of those guys who's kind of an inventor. He always wants to, you know, step up and see what's new. And he started making some rigs in his garage and next thing he knew he had built this business just from ground zero and as he was starting to build this business he was kind of following some of the Iowa um, catfishing tournament trails and just kind of watching people and anglers and everything and just seeing who's out there and talking to them and stuff and he came across my husband and I and our team member Ken and he started really following them and he wanted to bring two people on board, a team on board to, to sponsor. And at that time, I wasn't always fishing every weekend with those guys because I just had other things going on and a couple jobs and stuff. But um, he took on my husband, Troy and Ken and had them for about a good year or so and just kind of working with them. They tried the products and stuff and, you know, do reviews and everything. And then just throughout the years, he slowly added a couple teams and I got added just right after, like a year after that became part of the team. And now we have, um, two guys who are kayak anglers and they're really big into the flathead. So it's, I do get to learn a few things from them. And then we have a couple guys who, um, are from down South. So they're really good with the blues and everything. So we have guys all over now, but my husband and I are very, firm believers in only when it comes to sponsors to only have a sponsor that we truly love the product. And that's why this is the only sponsor we have right now. And also uh, one reason why we love him is that there aren't a bunch of uh, pro staff out there. There's only a few of us. And so we're very small and family oriented. So Mm -hmm. it's really good. And we can all just get together. We can work together um, we trust each other's opinions and can talk every, talk about everything. So I like I like that part. It's very family oriented. Also, all the products work. I love all the products we get to use them. I do have uh, two that maybe I don't use, mm-hmm. but everything else I use. And I will tell people that I don't just tell them just to, for them to buy it. I will tell them, you know, this is not my favorite product. I don't use that, and this is why. But you may like it. You know, it's just a preference thing. But he also it's kind of a one stop shop. He has everything we need. We literally, besides a reel, there's, we have everything. So we don't need to um, go out and not saying you have to have a sponsor, but we don't need to go out and look for this person for reels or this person for rods and hooks. And, you know, it's, it's, he's building this whole business and trying to have everything under one roof. So that's, what's great. And that's, I don't know. Yeah. And plus, he's a great guy, and the customer service is phenomenal. You won't, like, find anything better, so. Awesome. Well, we'll put a link to Whisker Seeker Tackle in the show notes so people can check that out. And, uh, yeah, like, I I ran into you down at ICAST in Orlando with them, so they they travel Mm -hmm. all over 
And, uh, um, that's cool. So once, you know, we're in this situation right now, so a a lot of the big shows have been canceled and we just found out that Mm -hmm. iCast is now like, I guess, going to be a virtual show. I don't know how that's going to look or work this year. So it's super disappointing, but I mean, it is what it is. (laughs) We got to deal with it. So any at once, I guess once we, hopefully there'll be some more shows this year. Is there anything coming up for you that you want to put out there a plug? Um, honestly, no. We, uh, when it comes to our shows, we just do the, a couple of them in, you know, right there in kind of February and stuff, January, February, because, uh, Troy and I again do the shows. We take the trailer and we travel wherever the shows are and we set them up ourselves and run them and work them and do everything and spend the 12 hours a day doing <laughs> it. So, We have to take time off um, our full-time jobs to do that as well. So we only do a couple right there during the winter, and then we actually stop because then we start to do our tournaments or our own traveling and things like that. Mm So, so, and we're we're only online. Um, We do have some products like in Shields and a few stores across the country and everything, but um, it's just a select few. But basically, we're online. So, and I noticed you want to check us out. I noticed they're running free shipping right now. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Take, take advantage of that. And uh, yeah. cool. one thing I was going to ask you, I forgot to ask, have you ever noodled for catfish? I have not. Um, it's something I would love to try <laughs> um, just to say I've done it. Um, but it's a, kind of a sore subject. Um, it depends on what you are noodling for. And I don't like... Um, some of them you're finding them on their beds mm. and so I don't necessarily like to pull them off their you know mm-hmm. if they're spawning or anything like that and so it's it's kind of one of those uh fine line and um I I don't know much about it yet to uh attempt it and plus I don't know if I want to stick my hand down a <laughs> snappy turtle's mouth oh, or yeah, anything exactly. like that either just that on accident so freak me um, out <laughs> yes so it is something that's like, yes, I would love to try it, but it's kind of, uh, I don't know. And, and I need to know more about it and, um, before I go to attempt it. So I'm gotcha. not hurting any fish or anything like that. So. Right. Gotcha. Cool. I was just curious if you, if that was something you'd ever done before. So I have not yet. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for all the awesome information. I think we could call this episode catfishing 101. You gave some really great tips for people that are wanting to get started with it and uh, i think i'm gonna give it a uh, more of a try this this season out on my lake um it's been a while yeah. since i've i've you know put that carolina rig out i love uh using the rod holders so i think i might look into those yeah. hooks that you were talking about and yeah. um and yeah just it's fun just to be out there chilling and then if if you get a fish on then that's awesome <laughs> So yeah, if not, you're getting some sun rays and yep. enjoying the scenery, and yeah, yep. Yep. Well, I would love to have you on our boat one oh, of these days too. Yeah, so. it would be I know great. You kind of talked about it, but you're not that far from me. I mean, oh no, was... you're a day trip away. Yeah, no for us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ten well, hours is nothing for us. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me too. I'm I'm used to driving up to Minnesota, and that's you know like 14 hours. So anything less than yep. that, I'm like, ah, no big deal. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So we'll make it happen, definitely. Yes, for sure. Cool. And where, uh, so you're on Instagram, and uh, I guess, is that the best place if people want to? Yeah, just, I'm I'm not a YouTuber or anything, uh, just Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Well, we'll I'm put... not, not that handy with the computers yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it takes a lot. It's a, it's a lot of time. And I think a lot of us would just rather be out there enjoying fishing too. So, yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thanks again for being on the show and uh, we'll definitely Thank stay, you for having me. stay in touch. All right. Thanks for listening. I hope you got some good stuff out of that. Now go go out, get some catfishing in, take some pictures, and post them in the Woman Angler and Adventure Facebook group. We'd love to see them. Thanks for listening, and see you next week.